What's going on everyone? Christy with Clutter Reduction Junk Removal. This is going to be part two of the trailer updates. Last time when we left here, we had put down the sealant on the inside on the floor to help protect it against water and damage over time. And then we went ahead and painted two coats on the outside. We just need to go through now and paint the inside, which I think I'm probably just going to do one coat. I think it'll be all right. And then we're going to go ahead and use the paintbrush to get the touch-ups on the little edges that I couldn't get with the roller, which on the outside is basically everything around the utility bracing. And then I did pick up a metal drill bit this time. I think last time I had a problem because I was using a wood one. I, I never use like actual drill bits, so I, uh, I usually just use whatever I have on hand. But we got some correct ones this time, and we're basically going to go through and kind of put them through all of the bracing points around the trailer and just run a lag bolt through it just for some extra support and that'll kind of be the bulk of it you know i will probably come back tomorrow unless a job comes in and we'll try to wrap up whatever's left over which will hopefully be the tarp system uh touching up any places that looks like the paint is fading otherwise and then attaching the e-tracks and um you know any other d rings or whatever i want to do and then something for the future would be to have my brother weld on some steel framing at the back end of the trailer to help kind of pull it back a little and to keep it from wanting to close in and i use ratchet straps and then i need to get a quote to do an aluminum flooring on the trailer which is something that i would really like to do and if it ends up being the same weight as plywood then we're just going to do plywood so that's kind of what we're doing right now. I'm going to go ahead and show you the trailer and then we'll go ahead and touch bases after the next step. So this is where we left off. It has rained a couple of times actually since I was last here. So paint is holding up pretty well so far. Everything is still prepped. The tape didn't come off, so that's good. That is a loud ass pickup truck. What the fuck? Um, so we don't have to worry about doing anything else with that. This is kind of what I was talking about. I need to go through with the paintbrush and touch up. I couldn't get there with the roller. Otherwise, this is two coats. I think we'll be all right. I don't think we need to do a third, but we may do one in the future. We'll see. Um, I will be checking for any places that maybe look like it's like fading, and I'll go ahead and touch up there. Like right here. Like I know right here I kind of went by fast when I was kind of wrapping up last time. So I'll go through and kind of get that again. And then this is the inside. So I did put a sealant down on the floor last time before we left, so that looks pretty good. But now we're gonna go ahead and paint the inside and then we'll touch up and do a paintbrush around. And then hopefully tomorrow we'll come by and kind of wrap up everything. So what I was talking about with the framing, if you can see, the trailer is kind of going this way. Now it is on a slant, so of course it's gonna do that naturally, but this makes me think that if I run a ratchet strap from left to right, it's going to pull that in kind of the same way it does with my aluminum sides now. So I kind of want to see if I can get my brother to basically, since this is steel, to weld on like a metal or a steel, uh, like a little four inch frame and attach it to this and just have it go straight up and then have them drill holes in it. And I'll use that to attach this whole side to it. And I'll do that on each side. So it has something to kind of keep it straight. This is it for today. I went ahead and started taking off some of the tape and plastic. I didn't get it all because I'm running out of time. And it's a lot harder to take off when it's not fresh. But this has two coats on the outside. I went ahead and touched up the little side things with the paintbrush. I'm just going to get something to like scratch off the white paint. And kind of clean it up when I'm all done with stuff. I got a little bit of some messes. I'm not perfect, you know, but the inside has two coats. Uh, I touched everything up with the paintbrush, so this is what it'll look like at the end of the day, except hopefully with a aluminum and or plywood flooring. We'll figure that out, but I think it came out pretty good with the two coats. Uh, the other side looks exactly the same. All right, I got them up and screwed in. Worked out pretty well. They literally sit right at the top. This one looks a little higher, but it's because it's missing the chunk of wood. Otherwise, it's flat. But it worked out pretty well, even for this, because I have the the mending plate here, because there's two separate 2x4s here. 
um, I was able to still kind of squeeze them in a little bit and I just kind of went overboard at the top just so for extra securement. But overall it worked out pretty well. Even at the end here, like when I have the, I have the bracing kind of running all the way down, I was able to just kind of plug some in in between. So I think it worked out pretty well. I think it's also good. I was thinking about putting them like in the middle because they would act as like a support beam as in a way. But then I figure like you're going to have a lot of weight pulling on it and tugging on the middle that this would probably just be a little safer over time being so close to the support beam. So I think that's a good call. Um, yeah, I mean, we'll have to get two more for this. And then I haven't decided if I want to get one for the front. I don't think I would really ever need one per se. Um, I'm just kind of brainstorming in my mind. I think that's going to be it for now. Um, there is some good to doing the verticals, and that's if I have a piece of glass that, you know, let's say like a round tabletop or something. Yes, I could do it horizontal and kind of cross hatch them, but this will make things a little easier. The next step is going to be, I'm actually going to put the signage on first because I really want to see what it looks like. So we have some lag bolts two and a half inch lag bolts that we're going to use with some washers and the signs are actually down here already they're going to go up on the side here they're three feet tall by eight feet long i was actually originally going to do four feet but then i was like oh you know i don't know maybe we'll just do you know four foot sides and or no i think that was for six foot but then i figured like this one i didn't want it to be too like filled so we ended up going with a three by eight, it's fine. Um, that's gonna be for the sides though. I haven't done anything for the front yet. I'm probably gonna order a separate one for the front. And then after that, we'll go ahead and put the tarp system on, which is actually, I think that's in my garage, God dang it. <laughs> well, that's in my garage, so we're not gonna be doing that today. That sucks. I really thought I had that here. So it is what it is. So this is how they come. It's literally just a poster board. And then it just five folds into signage. So this is eight feet wide and it's three feet tall. I kept it very simple. That was the whole idea with the first trailer. So it has my name, phone number, website, three estimates. Super simple. The only thing it doesn't have that my current trailer does is it doesn't have the uh, social media handles that say follow us and it has like Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube on it. So that's the only thing I didn't do. But my idea was to keep it simple and to the point. That's what my current trailer is. You know, I like that like nice, it's, it's all white and clear. You only have the important details. And I've gotten a lot of compliments about that as well. So we had the exact same board for both sides. And then we'll have um, for the front, eventually, we'll probably get something with our slogan on it and then like the name and website, kind of keep it simple. And then there won't be anything on the back. I wanted to do something on the back, but I don't know. I could always take my sign off of my current one, actually, and put it on this back. We'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll weigh out the pros and cons. There's probably not a lot of cons to it, but we'll see what we want to do. We ran into a slight problem. So I have this centered with the trailer. This is the seven foot mark. It's the 14 foot trailer. And that has a center fold on it. So I went ahead and made my dots for where the grommets are. Now before I drilled, cause I learned my lesson in the past, I went to go check the other side. And this is pretty much gonna come out right here. And then this other one is fine. And then the one on the end is going to hit where the E-track is. Now, they're two and a half inch lag bolts. So I could technically have it sit on the inside of this. But if it happens to fall between the E-track, I'm not going to be able to put a ratchet strap there. So I'm kind of thinking I could just use screws and washers for the ones that are hindering on the other side and use a lag bolt for the rest. So... Even if the screws were to fail, the lock bolt's going to hold it on. So I think we might do that. Just a little bit of an improvise. You know, that's what we're doing here. This is all an improvised situation. 
but I think that's going to be our best bet. So I don't think it'll look too weird either. I don't think, honestly, I don't think you're really going to see the difference. So I think we're going to do that. All right, it is up. Can you already tell that we uh, didn't do what we were going to supposed to do? I didn't do the live bolts. <clears throat> I did the screws. The reason for the live bolts was that if I ever need to change out the sign, I'm not constantly just re-drilling in the same hole in and out because then it's going to get loose over time. But, you know, if I need to move it over half an inch, I'll move it over half an inch. If I need to move it up and down, like, I don't think I'm going to be changing out the sign every, like, week. Besides, even with the hole, I can always just put wood filler in and close it off, and, like, you'll never even know it was there. So I went ahead and just did that. I did make my own holes on the side here in the middle. In the middle. There's no grommet there, but I'm just thinking in my mind, like, when I use tarps, I hate tarps so much. But when I would use tarps, the moment you have, like, a gap, the wind finds its way in, and then all of a sudden it's like, boop, 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 boop. So I went ahead and just made my own using the drill, made it nice and clean, stuck a washer in. I tried not to make it too tight because I don't want it to kind of tear, but I think it came out pretty well. What I'm probably going to do eventually is get some white spray paint and just go, and just make it kind of blend in all together. I won't do it so heavily that I can't take these back out, but you know, it'll blend in. You won't realize I get screwed in. So I think it came out pretty well. I'm pleased with it. I can't do a side view because I have a garage right here, but that's what it'll look like. Now for the other side. All right, signage is up and that is all we can do today because I forgot the tarp system. So I think it came out pretty good. Nice and flush. Hopefully, I don't think wind's gonna really be able to get behind it. Other side is done as well. It's a half inch crooked. I'm sorry. I'm annoyed about it too. It was kind of hard with the bushes and it got windy all of a sudden. But same concept. I did the little half inch thing. I have one screw left over from that box. So it's actually good we didn't have the e tracks because I wouldn't have been able to do this either. But I think it came out pretty well. If you are interested, and these signs for your trailer, if you have a wood build, I don't know how well they're going to hold up yet. So, you know, don't take it with a grain of salt. But I think for what they are and how cheap they are, I think this sign, which is three feet by eight feet, it was $38 or $36. One of the two. Maybe even with 31 because I think my total was $61. I don't know. $62. Something like that. It's around that price. Around 30 bucks. Um, and they come in different sizes. I think the biggest one you could do is a four by eight, which is what I was originally going to do, but I didn't want it to literally be like from here to here. But if you're interested in getting one for yourself, UZ Marketing is where I got it from. I have a link in the description for them. That's where I get my yard signs and my brochures and my business cards and flyers. Super cheap, local business, free shipping, price matching, in texas so can't really go wrong with them i will say there are a couple of products that i would get from vista print still knowing their prices and that's if you're looking to do something design wise that you want to take the guesswork out of vista print has a vast majority more templates so if you're not the most creative you can go there and probably just kind of adjust things but i will say with vista print Junk Removal is a very common company that uses them. So they actually have a template for every single type of marketing product that says Junk Removal. And they have like three to five templates pre-made for each thing. So you literally just go in and you know, swap out your information. So definitely can't go wrong there. But we're pretty much done for today. I can't do anything else. I don't have the screws. I don't have the E-Tracks. And I don't have my tarp system. So we'll have to come tomorrow after our job and finish that up and then the trailer will be 100 percent done well except for the uh flooring and the the beams on the back which i have to send a picture to my brother but i'll be seeing him tomorrow night so maybe i can get a quick quote from him but that is gonna do it for this and i will see you guys when we wrap things up welcome back to hopefully the last day of the trailer build it is 52 degrees outside so we're doing the intro in the truck because i don't want to be standing outside any longer than i have to 
we got the heat tracks from Harbor Freight, luckily. They were actually $3 cheaper than they would be individually on Amazon, but I'm assuming it's because it came with like D-ring attachments, which I don't care about, but that's probably why the price difference. So we got those two, and the game plan today is we are going to spray paint the fronts immediately on those, and then we're gonna do the lag bolts along the bottom trim. We got the extra washers now. And then we'll go back and paint the other side of the E-Tracks. And then we're gonna work on the tarp system, which I didn't even think about, but it's gonna be going through a four by four post that's attached to a two by four or two by six. So I might actually need to get like seven inch lag bolts from Home Depot for the tarp system because it comes with two holes pre-drilled. And I didn't even think about that. So we might have to make a special trip to Home Depot regardless. Because you can just never have everything, you know? That's 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 why the, that's why I was on Family Guy. Like, oh, you go to Home Depot, you gotta go back 20,000 fucking times to go get more stuff because you forget everything. Yeah. So, that's the game plan. But then the trailer will be 100% done. It's exciting because I think my insurance actually kicks in tomorrow. I signed it up, like three weeks ago but I planned for it not to kick in until February 1st because I didn't think I was gonna have it out on the road until then and there's no point in paying for insurance when you're not driving it right be silly so that's what we are going to do for that and then afterwards we're gonna be heading to a repeat client who owns a gym and a uh, gun store we're gonna be helping him declutter his storage rooms in his warehouse and then reorganize it all right quick update we got the sides painted they're drying right now we got those had already done i already did the flippity flop so we went through and painted the washers on the sign not the exact same white but i guess it kind of blends in a little bit and then i went ahead and put the lag bolts on all of the bottoms ran into a slight issue so I had three and a half inch lag bolts left over and it's a good thing that I didn't return the two and a half ones because the three and a half in here were sticking out like this much inside and I don't have a grinder to trim them off. So I ended up using the two and a half ones for all of them, which means I can't return them, which sucks. But now I don't have to worry about getting another tool to cut them down. So that is what it is. Um, the only problem is that I can't tighten them without having somebody hold the other side. So I was able to get eight of them in out of like 20 before my brother left for work, but now I can't do the rest. So that kind of sucks. Um, so I'll have to do that eventually. This is the tarp system. I got them from Amazon. I'll put the link in the description for the same one that I get and you can get different sizes in case you guys are looking for one yourself. You can make these on your own if you're crafty. If not, this is uh, what I made. So it basically just has an aluminum hollow hexagon. And you cut it with either a grinder or a sawzall or a hand saw. I just use my sawzall. And then you just adjust it to length. So this guy will fit in between these two. These are your ends. And then it comes with a little screw. You just fasten them together and you just cut it to where it fits perfectly with that. These are your mountings that go on each side. This is your little locking system so you can unravel the uh, tarp. If I can, okay, I can't do that right now. And then here's the other side. And then it comes with like the little hooks and stuff, but I don't use this. Here's the crankshaft and then here's the tarp. So the tarp, I got a six and a half by 18 foot tarp. My trailer is only 14 feet long. The reason I go longer in the length is if I have, let's say a tall item sticking up, I will then have the tarp going over it, which means that the higher length and canopy is gonna pull from the length of the overall piece. So I don't wanna come up short if I have a full load. So that's why I did that. I actually did a seven foot by 15 foot on my six and a half and 12 foot trailer. Um, and I went a little wider in the width for that same reason, but it does get a little tangled and it's always a little wonky rolling it up. So I stuck with the original width and just went longer. 
So we'll go ahead and at least get that kind of measured and cut up and ready to go. But I'm definitely going to have to get some longer log bolts because I need to run that through this. So I'm going to have the 4x4 four four plus the 2x4. So I'm going to need like a 7 inch log bolt I think. So pooey, but it's what it is. All right, a couple of complications, but nothing that a positive attitude and more money can't fix. So we are headed to Home Depot right now to pick up some six inch lag bolts, a little thicker than what I have been buying. So new territory for me. And we are going to get four of those. And then when we get back, we'll put the E-tracks on because they should be dry by now. And then we are going to try to just wedge a wrench on the outside of the trailer where the hex bolts are and just kind of wedge it between the next bolt down and the side rail and see if we can use that to hold it in place so I can go on the other side and use the impact to tighten it because that's what I had to use my brother for and he would just went to a job. So I don't know if he's gonna get back in time that I need to leave to go to my job. So hopefully that'll work out. And then the other only thing to do would be the tarp system, which is pretty straightforward. It's literally just measuring the aluminum hex perfectly. Always go a little bit longer than you need to, just like half an inch. And if you need to make it a little shorter, you can, because if you cut it too short, you're fucked. So we are going to get that installed. That'll probably take like a half hour-ish, maybe 45 minutes. Actually, I have those, uh, those new drill bits that are meant for the hard metal. I'm sure that'll breeze right through wood. I don't know if it's supposed to be for wood though, because I think it's, well, I guess it doesn't matter. I was gonna say, I think it like it heats itself to cuts the metal easier. So I'm thinking of like a grinder for a cast, like it doesn't actually impact your skin because it uses the friction of the cast. So maybe it actually wouldn't like burn a hole through the wood. Maybe it would just, I don't know. I don't know anything, I'm stupid. But we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna get this done today before we need to go to our job no matter what. I am not gonna come back for like, seventh day this is already turning into a really long project for no reason and then we'll see our brother tonight other brother so we will figure out the estimate approximately for the flooring and the bar on top and that'll be it and then pretty soon you guys will be seeing this trailer out on my videos because we'll be using it on jobs so exciting stuff so it's situations like this that make me want to just say i should have just paid my fucking brother to do it all right I got six inch lag bolts. And the drill bit doesn't go all the way through. Okay. I measured it very precisely and just try to line up the two and try to meet in the middle and you know hammer the lag bolt through. The problem is that the tarp system isn't the longest. So I'm kind of too close to the two by fours on the other side to where the drill has gone slightly on an angle and it makes it really hard to do. So I am deciding, okay, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. I'm going to put the tarp system farther back from the front where the two by four is. But now I need to go back to Home Depot to get a five eight lag bolt because the ones that they come with is meant to go through a dump trailer. So they're like this big. And I needed to go through at least a two by four. So I need like a two and a half inch lag bolt, give or take. And I have two and a half inch lag bolts, but they're too small. So it doesn't even make sense to use them in the meantime because I'm gonna have to replace them anyways. And I need to be able to take the whole thing out in order to do that. So we're gonna put the E-tracks in. So at least that's done. I'm going to get my wrench and see if I can do the little bolts. And worst come to worst, we'll do the tarp system another day. And I'm getting frustrated. So, we are going to do what we can. Put a smile on our face. And come back tomorrow really, really early before we do any jobs. And do the tarp system with the proper live bolts. And I'm going to have to get some more wood filler to fill in the massive holes I just made with the 4x4 post and the uh, 
five eighths drill bit or three eighths, whatever it was. So that's where we're at. But try to stay positive. Okay, so we ran into a couple of problems that got me frustrated earlier. So we moved on to something else before I tear this whole trailer down. So the drill for the 4x4 and 2x6 doesn't go all the way through. So I had to try to measure each side and see if I could match it like on both points. Didn't work out super well. In addition to that, the thing is so close to the edges that it just doesn't work properly. So without going into too much detail because it's boring and frustrating probably even just to hear, we moved on. And I'm probably going to have to use the 2x4 itself slightly over from the 4x4, which means that I'm going to be losing like 6 inches of space when I'm loading the trailer, which is stupid. <laughs> so I am going to not just do anything at all until we figure this part out. Um, an option would be if I can have my brother make me like a little two by four plate, like, I don't know, eight inches long and just use lag bolts and bolt it in along the side and then just fasten those to the steel plate. I don't know, but at this point, it's a lost cause. I can't do anything with the tarp. So we moved on from that. I got the E-Tracks in. They look good. All's good to go. The bolts, I tried to just use a wrench to hold it in place. Didn't work. So I'm going to need somebody here to help me do this, which is very frustrating. So as of today, we're done because I need to go off to my job. So a little bit of a waste of a morning, especially because I have to go back to Home Depot to get something. But it is what it is. What are you going to do? That's what happens when you try to save money and just shit yourself. I could just have my brother build me this whole damn thing for $3,500. would have been done. would have been fine. Saved me a hell of a lot of time. Um, that's pretty much it, though. Here's the inside. I got all the E-Tracks in. Look pretty good. I like the black on the white. But I also like that they're kind of hidden, too. So if you were just looking at the trailer straight, you don't really see them too much. You only really see like the front one here, but they're kind of all hidden, so I kind of like that. But, uh, yeah, uh, I won't show you all of the damages, but for example, this had to be done because it has to sit so high up here that it... So we're gonna fill that in with some wood filler and paint over it. Hopefully it'll be okay. But that's pretty much it for this. Um, I got this cool little guy has a button that you can like release it so you don't have to sit there and turn it forever. But I'm not gonna be able to finish this today. So I'm gonna just return it. I'm not gonna keep this, it was like 20 bucks. So that's that. And everything else is done. So that's gonna be it for today. Uh, I'll see you guys whenever we get the rest of the shit done. All right, welcome back. So it's been about a week since we have been here because there's not much else I can really do on the trailer. But it is pretty much done. The last couple of things we need to do require a professional service, whom is my brother, who does the welding. And that is to do the aluminum flooring, which is something I really wanted to do. And then we have to get a steel beam welded into right here to fasten the sides to it so it doesn't want to lean this way, I have this holding it in place right now. And we're doing that on both sides. And that is something that I anticipated might happen, but I wasn't for sure. So it's okay that it's happening. Um, and then the third thing is we are sealing in the ramp with a plate. Now, this isn't necessary, but I am doing it for two reasons. Two reasons. Number one, with my current trailer, there's a lot of dips in the grid lock stuff that occurred from a really heavy dolly or a really heavy trash can resting on it for more than like two seconds and it pushed it down. And the only way to kind of put it back is it just, and I don't want to do that. And so I want to get something that kind of covers it. In addition, I wanted to seal proof the inside of the trailer because I am trying to prevent stuff from coming out of it. 
whether it's leaking through or coming out the back. So those are the two main things for that. Um, the fourth thing, and this was a not anticipated thing, was I need to get, sorry, I need to get a steel plate custom cut to go right here so I can attach my tarp system pieces, which is super freaking annoying because it's a weird angle and a weird cut and it's causing issues. And because it's a custom cut, it is automatically expensive. So because we are technically done with the trailer and I have everything done and I already have the estimate for what everything is going to cost, including tax, we are going to go home and tally everything up and talk about costs. So I know that's something that everyone's been waiting for. And in addition to the costs, I'm going to answer some questions that I already got in part one, if you haven't seen that yet, that I anticipated on receiving. And they're pretty general questions. Some of them are very repetitive and some of them are not so repetitive. So I'm just going to quickly answer those. And then when the trailer is all said and done 100%, we will do a final walkthrough with it. And that's going to be a separate video. And we'll talk about some of the pros and cons. So the questions will answer why we did all this and why we didn't do this and that. And then the final video will be like, hey, it's all done now. And here's the pros and the cons of the trailer in general, plus the build of it. So I will see you guys back at the house and we will talk about the good stuff. All right, let's answer some frequently asked questions before we get into pricing. Please note that this is my opinion, my experience, my comfort level, everything that I did, I did for me. It may do different from you. There's always a different way to do something. There's always, oh, you should have done this, you should have done that. So quick backstory before we get into the questions, because this is going to apply a little bit. My main objective this year was to get a double axle trailer. That was it. So in 2022 of June, I got my pickup truck and a trailer. Before that, it used U-Holes and I had a personal little Hyundai. I got a single axle trailer. It wasn't until a couple months later I posted it on YouTube and I already had a build on it and everything that everyone called me a fucking idiot because I needed a double axle for junk removal. I didn't know better, lack of experience, lack of knowledge. No one ever asked me, no one ever told me. It happens. I use that trailer up until this day, never had an issue, but I am concerned with weight on at least two or three of every 10 jobs. And last year was a pretty good year for me. So I was like, okay, let's at least get a double axle. So I'm where, like, I don't need to worry about the weight anymore. And for a while, I considered getting a dump trailer. All right. We've talked about it in like videos and stuff. I considered it for a while. I was against it for a long time. And then I was like, you know what? This is like the new norm. Let's look into that a little bit more. And it got down to like a month before decision making. And I did a very specific pros and cons list for me. And it just didn't quite sit right with me. And I'll explain why in the first reason. So the first question was, why didn't I get a dump trailer? So number one, cost. In my area, they're like 12,000 bucks. If I go up to North Florida, which is like four and a half hours away from me, they're like 10-ish. If I go to Orlando, they're like high nines. Yes, I could buy used from someone on Facebook. I don't have the cash for that, if you're getting my drift here. And I didn't want to buy used, like a five-year-old trailer for like half the price. You know, I don't like buying, there's certain things I don't like buying old. Like I'd rather buy a new or like one-year-old or something from a dealership. So that was the main thing. The second thing is weight. An empty dump trailer is pretty heavy. So once you add in like two tons in it, which I would anticipate, especially doing like debris jobs, that's a lot of weight for this truck. And I do have intentions of upgrading this truck to something that can pull a little bit more weight in the future, but it's not a right now decision. And then the third thing is access. And a lot of you are probably gonna disagree with me about this, but I, and I've dealt with, I've loaded dump trailers before, not mine, but I've loaded dump trailers before. They're like, what, 22 to 27 inches up in the air, depending on what they are. And you can get ramps for them, but 
like they might work for a hand truck, but I can't imagine a four wheeler really being super great. And for me, the burden of having to kind of hand load a lot of stuff wasn't worth the benefit of being able to dump it at the dump. Like that's one portion of the job. But I just didn't see that being worth it overall. Not as a primary trailer, at least. I do plan on getting one at the end of this year if all goes accordingly, uh, profit-wise. But I, just for a primary trailer, I just need a double axle, right? And I just didn't think that this would be a good match for me as a primary trailer. So now that I have my double axle, my next one will be a dump trailer. The second question was why I did a wood build versus an aluminum build again, like my current trailer, or why didn't I get a metal or an enclosed trailer? So for me, an enclosed trailer was pretty quickly wiped off the books because I didn't like the fact that you're kind of limited by its height. So let's say it's like seven feet tall, eight feet tall. You can't set anything up higher than that. So you'd have to lay it down, which takes up a lot of room. And the landscaping like mesh metal is what I'm assuming people are talking about. I would have to then fill in the sides for the same exact reason I'm trying to fill in the flooring in the back ramp. I don't want anything to have to come out. Um, and the reason I didn't do an aluminum build again, cost. So as I mentioned before, I, you know, the adding up the dump trailer and stuff, if I could, this trailer was like 3,500 or 3,800 or something, something like that. No, I don't know. This trailer was like in the 3,000s, 30, 3,400. Um, if I had done the sides on it, which I anticipated with the extra coverage and the inflation of price materials, it was probably gonna be a little closer to like high 3,000s. And then I would personally want to get a wrap done if I'm doing the aluminum build. So let's just say 5,500 to 6,000 would be the cost. And at that point, with a $3,500 trailer, I might as well just go get a dump trailer. So for my current position financially, I wanted to go cheap just so I can have the lack of concern and then I'll upgrade over time. So that's the main reason I didn't do that. And the wood, when I priced it out, was like already $2,500 cheaper, not including like the fact that like I don't have to worry about getting a wrap now. Um, and also with the wood, there's a lot of specifics I can do to it. Like I can put the E-Tracks in, I can put hooks in, I can change signage around if I don't like it. I just get wood filler, fill in the hole, send it down, paint it, good to go, remove it around. Once you drill a hole through aluminum, you have a hole there forever. So that was kind of the main reasons for that. And then I had a few questions asking why I did such a heavy duty build, isn't gonna add a lot of weight to the trailer and it's gonna be more expensive. So. For the build, I wanted to make sure it was secure and safe to my liking. I didn't want to do flimsy and cheap. I know this isn't always the case, but I have seen things go wrong with trailers and I've heard about things going wrong and I didn't want to go super cheap and have to change it out in a couple of months or change it out in six months or a year. Like I wanted it to last at least a little while. And a uh, quick story. So I was driving on my main highway uh, probably like a year ago and there was a guy who passed me and went to the HOV lane, which you're not supposed to be in. I was in the far right lane. And his one side was like this as he was driving down the highway. He had, it was like a five by eight or five by 10, so smaller, but he had plywood and then he had two by fours like through the stick pockets holding it in place. And I don't know, freaking Final Destination, Murphy's Law, somehow the wind scooped up the side it took the left side out of it and flung it back on the highway and it scared the shit out of me and I wasn't even near him. Like, I can't even, I don't know what happened because I can't see out my back window with the trailer and I didn't catch it in my side mirror. But I can't even imagine if that hit a car what that like kind of destruction it would have caused. Like, stuff like that makes me nervous as hell. That's why, like, I'll sit there and bungee down my tarp with 50 bungees and make it as secure as possible because... I don't like the idea of something falling out of my trailer or something bad happening like that where you cause a very strong potential risk for other people around you or yourself. So stuff like that just makes me nervous. I have a couple of friends who are contractors and I know some people who do a lot of woodworking. I asked them what wood they recommend. They told me two by sixes and they told me why they wouldn't do the other things. 
the hardware might be a bit excessive, but that's just me just being comfortable and I like hardware. You know, I use it for all my home projects. So yeah, some of the things could have been done without and probably would have saved me 30, 40, 50, 60 bucks here and there. But overall, it's just what I was comfortable with and that's all it is. So hopefully that answers some of your questions. If you think I'm an idiot, that's okay. Sometimes I think I'm an idiot too, but you live and you learn and you make mistakes and you get better or you don't, you know, whatever. But now we're going to go ahead and get into the pricing, which I know a lot of you are looking forward to. And I won't know the weight until I get my decal at uh, SWA. So that'll be later down the road. All right. So I went ahead and did all the pricing. I just kind of summed it up by where, like the source of where I bought stuff from. Luckily, I did Home Depot for pretty much everything. So finding that on my bank statements was super easy. So for the wood, hardware, paint, everything, it was about... $1,150 for materials for the build. And that included a lot of tools and the sandpaper pads and like the little drill bits I had to buy for the metal ones. So that included some things that I'm going to be able to keep reusing in the future. So a little bit of an investment there. For UZ marketing, I actually made a mistake in my first video. I said $38 for those signs. They're actually $68. So 30 bucks difference. I'm sorry. Um, but with tax and zero dollar shipping with UZ marketing, came out to one forty six eighty eight. On Amazon for the tarp system, it was two oh four, and the future fabrication I'm going to need for the trailer is said to be nine seventy, and I didn't include tax in that. Um, but roughly, it's about twenty five hundred twenty four seventy to be exact. But because I didn't calculate tax, we're just going to say twenty five hundred all in for the trailer build for everything. 2,500, let's remember that number. If I had done the aluminum build, I estimated about 3,800 for the walls, which is like inflation and extra materials. And then for the flooring and the other thing I would need, let's just say altogether about 4,600. If I had done the wrap on it, and I'll explain why I would have gotten a wrap and not just put signage up, I estimated about 1800 and that's probably on the low end because my first one was 1700 It was a lot less space. So altogether, you're looking at 6400 So automatically, I saved almost $4,000. $4,000 saved by doing a wood build. Was it not the easiest? No, it, it wasn't the easiest. Was it a pain in the ass? Yes. Did I get very frustrated and want to cut the whole thing in half and throw it away and drive into a ditch? Yes, but we didn't. And that's the positive thing. So the reason I would want to do the wrap is if you go back, actually, I'll throw up a picture of what the trailer looks like without a wrap on it. Cause I did drive around for a while before I got the wrap done. Cause I was trying to space out the purchases a little bit. So we had some monies to pay for it, but it doesn't look great after about like a week with general just weather wear and tear on a flush aluminum side with no kind of sealant on it. And you can't stick a magnet to aluminum. So you only really have so many options. You either fill it in with some kind of paint that can stick on aluminum well, or you get signage and drill it into it and then you still aren't really covering all of it unless you get a perfect fat, uh, fit or you get a wrap on it which is what i would have wanted to do so obviously i probably could have done the paint route and then put the sign over it like i did my wood build and probably only would have been about let's say 300 bucks so yes that would have been a 1500 dollars cheaper option but didn't think about it at the time it is what it is at the end of the day i still at worst would have saved two thousand dollars so I'll take it. Now, as I mentioned before, yes, I do plan on getting a dump trailer when I can afford one, preferably at the end of this year, um, if all goes accordingly. But it's just not something that's in the books right now. So that's why we went with the routes that we did. So hopefully that answers some questions cost-wise. I know a lot of people are asking about that. I will go ahead and do the math real quick to see how much approximate weight I have on the trailer. And go ahead and take your guess really quick. I'm going to go ahead and pull up the math here and see how close you are. All right, 
So I went ahead and figured the average cost of pressure treated two by sixes for 14 feet in length and factor that in by linear foot. And then I did the same thing for the four by four posts, which are five feet tall and there's two of them. And then I kind of just put in like 30 bucks for hardware. I don't really know how to weigh that without doing individual numbers. I don't care to do that. And then I put down how much it would be for the aluminum flooring because my brother gave me the, down to the very decimal point of how much the flooring is per, per square foot. So I factor that in and then I factor it in the tarp estimate, like probably 40 pounds, 30 pounds. So all together, the build from start to finish was 1,338 pounds, give or take. The trailer tear weight is 1,400 pounds. So all together, 2738 roughly. Um, so that's kind of about where I was thinking. I was thinking like 2,600 pounds when I was doing the math in my head originally. So not too far off. And yeah, so I should still be able to load uh, like one and a half to one and three quarter tons into the trailer comfortably without overloading it. And that still gives my truck a couple of thousand pounds of legal realm before it's getting close to capacity. So that is good enough for me. The majority of my loads are between like, and this is just like household furniture and household goods. I would say my typical full load is usually like 1,700 to 2,000 pounds, give or take. So my heaviest, well, my common debris jobs, depending on if it's like tile or wood or whatever, is usually like 2,000 to like 2,600 tops. Um, and that's only bed loading it up to like two feet in height. So my game plan with the 14 foot trailer would be to get speed packs, which could be really beneficial for me because I can load it into the speed pack roll it out to the truck, get it into the trailer, and then when I get to the dump, wheel it off and just dump the speed pack out. And then, you know, just, it's like a little miniature dump truck. But I figured I can line up two speed packs next to each other in the trailer, run a strap, and then just line that up up to three times. I have a lot of four-wheelers. Don't underestimate my amount of four-wheelers. So I figured if I had a constru like construction, construction debris job I knew I was going to, and I brought, let's say, six dollies with me and i did one speed pack per each one and then i have my two wheelie trash cans and a gorilla cart if i need it like i can pretty much have everything construction be wise on wheels and it would just be that much easier to delegate so i think that's pretty good i don't plan on pulling like four thousand pounds in anything so it was just to help alleviate the anxiety of huh that's just a lot of weight for a single axle and we just solved that. So that is it for me. I will, the next video you guys see will be the final product. And I'm going to do like a pros and cons of everything. Um, and some of the mistakes I came across and that I would fix in the future. And I'll be sure to mention some of the feedback that people gave me leading up to the process and during the process. That probably would have been better, but I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So you know, if that's something that you're looking to do for yourself, learn from my mistakes or take what I did and make it better. Right? So that's what business is all about. Take a product, make it better, send it. So that is going to do it for me. And I will see you guys next time.